COVID. Well, we are so happy to have the head of neurology at Hartford Hospital, Dr. Mark Alberts, with us right now. Doctor, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. How are you today? Great. Thank you. Yeah, glad to have you here. Uh, I'm like a lot of people. I had never heard of it, but I, he, you know, when you talk about people having trouble hearing words and understanding them and saying it, you'd almost be tempted to think it sounds like two different problems, one with the ear, one with the mouth. But I'm guessing that's our clue that the problem is really in the brain somewhere, I'm guessing? That's correct. Uh, an aphasia is really a difficulty with language, and you can either have trouble producing language, such as talking, or understanding language in terms of comprehending what somebody is telling you, and sometimes it even manifests itself with difficulty repeating things. So all of those different symptoms fall under the big umbrella of an aphasia. Uh, is any one type more common than the other, meaning uh, the hearing problems versus the speaking problems? Yeah, I think what most people are, are more familiar with is the speaking difficulty because that's more obvious if somebody is having difficulty communicating or, you know, that's more common than people having difficulty understanding and it's more obvious to a bystander like a friend or a family member. Right. Now, in that past news report, his family said it's already starting to impair his cognitive abilities. Uh, we don't like to predict, but I'm guessing that may also mean that there, there's a problem with the hearing part of it, that he's just having trouble understanding it. But, uh, I mean, would you sort of take that from it or is that just not enough information to go on? Well, I, th I think it really speaks to the underlying causes of an aphasia. And there are some common causes of aphasia, things like a stroke, which would come on suddenly, uh, head trauma, uh, a brain tumor, which would come on more gradually, or what I think they're hinting at is a very progressive process that comes on gradually and then gets worse. And when you see that, you start thinking of what we call a degenerative process that can affect not just speech and comprehension, but other spheres of cognition, such as thinking, such as memory, such as behavior. And in that realm, you start thinking of diseases such as Alzheimer's disease or other degenerative processes. And we're starting to see reports from people on social media whose relatives suffer from aphasia. And over and over, I'm seeing people talk about how frustrating it is for people who are suffering from it. We'd love to cure it. Can we at least treat it? Is it curable and or treatable? Well, we have various treatment approaches. I don't know that it's curable. It really depends on the underlying cause of the disease. But if it is a degenerative process, we could try medicines that we use in other people with Alzheimer's disease, medicines such as Aricept or Nemenda. It's also important to treat any underlying conditions such as depression, because as you said, it may be very frustrating for folks who uh, are, not, are unable to communicate, so they may have a superimposed depression. And then very important that they get some type of speech therapy to help minimize the impact of the disease and maximize whatever function they have and the chance for recovery. Okay, yeah, it sounds like it could be part of a larger constellation of issues or at least treatments. Uh, Dr. Alberts, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning to give us a little bit of a primer on aphasia. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yes.